As Richard and the carriage driver approached the desert, the aura of dread in the carriage drew stronger and stronger. It wasn't the increasingly freezing temperature chilling Richard to the bone, but rather the idea of a pack of ravenous wolves out there in the darkness, ready to pounce at any moment. What's that sound? There's a storm coming. Sounds like it's just over the mountains. It won't be long before it gets here. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, mister, be careful. Are you trying to kill those horses? You'll whip them to death. Why doesn't he answer me? What a strange man. The driver was merciless. He whipped the horses harder and harder. Richard heard the wolves howling again. It sounded as if they were getting closer. Just then, the driver finally spoke. This is it. We made good time. About an hour early. We're here already? Yeah, we sure are. And I don't see nobody coming to pick you up. You heard them wolves out there. We're in their territory now. Hmm. What should I do? I just can't leave them. Uh, thank you, driver. You can let me off here. Are you crazy? If I let you out here, them wolves will strip you down to bones in two seconds flat. So what should I do? Well, suppose I'll wait here with you till someone comes to pick you up. Don't see as I can do nothing else. What's wrong with the horses? Something spooked them. Nothing. Look, there's your fancy carriage arriving. It'll take you the rest of the way. It really was a beautiful carriage, with brilliant stained glass windows and heavily embroidered curtains. The driver was perched on a tall seat in front. The carriage was driven by the most incredible horses Richard had ever seen. They each stood eight feet tall, with glossy raven black coats and bright eyes. Just looking at the horses and carriage, Richard began to feel better. Clearly, whoever owns this carriage takes good care of his animals, he thought. As the carriage approached, its driver spoke. Well, look at that. You're early. You must have made good time. Well, he was in an awful hurry, you know. I was in a hurry? I never said that. Where does he get this nonsense? He was the one whipping the living daylights out of those horses. The other driver stepped down from the carriage and inclined his head to Richard. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. We ought to be on our way. Yes, uh, all right, let's go. Wait, hold, hold on a minute. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There, that prayer will offer you a, a bit of protection. You look after yourself now, and whatever happens, don't lose that amulet you got. What do you mean, whatever happens? Richard never got an answer, as the new driver grabbed his wrist with a vice-like grip. His hand was cold, his fingers long and bony. Richard whimpered involuntarily at the pain. The new driver released his wrist, smirking. There was something odd about him. He wore a long black coat and a tall black hat both of a hue darker than any Richard had ever seen before. Below the brim of the hat, his eyes were a strange reddish color. When he opened his mouth to speak, Richard noticed that his teeth were very long and sharp, and they seemed to glisten in the moonlight. If you wouldn't mind handing over the guest luggage... 
The other driver loaded Richard's bags onto his carriage with surprising ease as Richard climbed aboard. It was as beautiful inside as it was on the outside, with cushioned seats and velvet curtains. A thick, elaborately woven rug covered the floor. My master told me to look after you. Said you're a special guest. It's awful cold outside, but there's a blanket under the seat and a bottle of rum. Have a swig. It'll warm you right up. As the carriage began to move, Richard started to feel more comfortable. The rum warmed him up, and he wrapped himself in the blanket and laid down. Outside, he heard the new driver whip the horses harder. The horses began to move faster and faster, as though they were trying to outrun the wind blowing around them. Richard peered out the window. Despite the rising moon, it was nearly pitch black outside. The lantern hanging in front of the carriage barely illuminated the path before them. As he watched, the carriage passed by the barely perceptible outline of a single crooked tree, branches bare. How long before we reach Via de Sombra? Hey, I-, I asked you a question. Despite the cold and gnawing sense of apprehension, Richard's eyes began to droop. He fell into a deep, deep sleep. As he slumbered, he felt claws scraping over his chest, moving toward his neck. He tried to push them away, but found he couldn't move his arms at all. His hands felt like pieces of dead meat attached to his body. The claws reached his neck and began to squeeze tighter and tighter. Richard thrashed back and forth, desperate for breath. Just as he felt his lungs were about to crumple, his eyes snapped open. Through the window, he caught sight of the driver's long, cadaverous face and glistening blood-red eyes. Richard screamed in terror. Ah! Oh, what's wrong, sir? Did someone sneak in there with you? (sighs) Nothing. It was just a dream. Just a dream. (laughs) <laughs> well, then that ain't nothing to worry about. You just relax now. We've got smooth roads ahead of us. <laughs> hey, wait. What did you mean, did someone sneak in? Oh, now, don't you worry about that. Best if you don't know. What, 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 what could he possibly mean by that? How, how, how could anyone have snuck in the... I I would have seen them, unless... Richard was shaken to his core. He couldn't imagine how someone could have snuck in without him noticing, but the driver's words had so frightened him that he began to search the carriage for anywhere another person could be hiding. He looked underneath the seats, beneath the curtains, and the luggage compartment, but could find no sign of anyone else inside the carriage. Where could they be? Here? Or here? It's so dark, I can't see a thing. Honestly, it's probably all my imagination. There's no one here at all. I'm panicking over nothing. The carriage was moving across the desert at such a speed that the smallest rock could have toppled them, making them easy prey for wolves. Suddenly, his eye caught on something outside the window. A single crooked tree. Hang on. I've seen that tree before. But but it can't be. Is he going around in circles? Why on earth would he do that? Driver! Driver! Oh, it's no use. I suppose he can't hear me over this wind. Richard tried to remain calm when he suddenly remembered that the carriage driver from Marfa had said to him how dangerous it was to be out past midnight. It was too dark to see his watch, so he struck a match and held it up. Oh no. It's midnight already. If there's any truth to those stories, there are werewolves and evil spirits lurking outside this carriage right now. Why is this driver wasting time going around in circles? 
Dumb animals! Afraid of their own shadows. Come on! Move! The horses reared up and broke into a gallop. Richard fell back into his seat and hung on to keep himself from being flung across the carriage. Hey! What's gotten into your horses? We're going too fast, you'll get us killed! 